Hi, this is Rena, your English teacher from Whispered Hub. Before we start the video, I want to know why you are learning English so that we can make a strong community. Here are some options. A, to travel. B, to have better job opportunities. C, to communicate with the world. D, to access information. E, any other reason. Please write your reason in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Whispered Hub for rapid growth in your English learning. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it now. Let's begin the story. Jenny, 21, lives in a small Canadian town. She loves Alex, a Harvard student. To talk to him better, she moves to New York to learn English. She faces challenges but never gives up. Jenny makes friends and improves her English. Her bond with Alex grows stronger. Watch this exciting journey till the end to see how Jenny's hard work leads to love and success. Part 1. A New Beginning Hi, my name is Jenny. I am 21 years old and I live in a small town in Canada. My town is very quiet and peaceful. I like it here, but I have a big dream. I want to learn English. Why do I want to learn English? Well, I love a boy named Alex. He studied at Harvard University. He knows English very well, but I do not know English. He does not love me because we cannot talk easily. So, I decided to learn English. I have a plan. I will go to New York to learn English. Mom, Dad, I want to go to New York to learn English, I said one evening at dinner. My mom looked surprised. New York? That's far from here, Jenny, she said. Yes, it is. But I need to learn English. I want to talk to Alex and many other people. I explained. My dad smiled. That's a big dream, Jenny. We are proud of you, but it will be hard. Are you ready for it? He asked. I am ready, Dad. I want to try. I want to learn, I replied. My parents agreed. They said they would support me. I was very happy. I started to prepare for my trip to New York. I packed my clothes, my books, and some food from home. On the day of my flight, my parents drove me to the airport. I was nervous, but excited. Goodbye, Jenny. Be careful and study hard, my mom said, hugging me. I will, Mom. Thank you, I said. Call us when you arrive, okay? My dad said. Okay, Dad. I will call you. Goodbye. I waved and walked to the plane. The flight was long, but I was too excited to sleep. I thought about my new life in New York. I hoped I would make friends and learn English well. When I arrived in New York, everything was big and busy. The buildings were tall, and the streets were full of people and cars. It was very different from my small town in Canada. I took a taxi to my new home. It was a small apartment near my English school. The apartment was tiny, but it was cozy. I unpacked my things and called my parents. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I am in New York. The city is so big, I said. We are glad you are safe, Jenny. Take care and good luck with your studies, my mom replied. Thank you, Mom. I will call you again soon. Goodbye, I said. The next day was my first day at the English school. I was very nervous. What if I did not understand anything? What if I could not make friends? I took a deep breath and walked to the school. At the school, I met Mr. Smith. He was my teacher. He was very kind and friendly. Hello, Jenny. 
Welcome to our English class, Mr. Smith said. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I am happy to be here, I replied. Mr. Smith introduced me to the other students. They were from different countries. Some were from Brazil, some from Japan, and some from Italy. Everyone was learning English. Hi, I am Maria from Brazil, one girl said to me. Hi, Maria. I am Jenny from Canada, I replied. It's nice to meet you, Jenny. Let's learn English together, Maria said with a smile. The first lesson was about greetings and introductions. Mr. Smith taught us how to say, Hello, good morning, and how are you? Hello, Maria, how are you? I practiced with my new friend. I am fine, thank you. And you? Maria replied. I am fine too. Thank you, I said. We practiced many times. It was fun, but also a bit hard. I wanted to learn more and more. After class, Maria and I walked to a nearby cafe. We wanted to practice our English. What do you want to drink, Jenny? Maria asked. I want coffee, please. I replied. We ordered our drinks and sat down to talk. We used simple English words and sentences. It was a good practice. Why do you want to learn English, Jenny? Maria asked. I love a boy named Alex. He knows English very well. I want to talk to him, I explained. That's a nice reason. I want to learn English to travel and meet new people, Maria said. We talked for a long time. I felt happy to have a new friend. I was not alone in New York. I had someone to talk to and practice with. In the evening, I went back to my apartment. I was tired but happy. I called my parents to tell them about my first day. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I had a good day. I made a friend named Maria. She is from Brazil, I said. That's great, Jenny. We are glad you're happy. Keep studying hard, my dad said. I will, Dad. Thank you. Good night, I said. The next days were busy. I went to school every day and practiced my English. I learned new words and sentences. I talked with Maria and other students. I felt my English getting better little by little. One day, Mr. Smith gave us a homework assignment. Write a short story about your day. Use the words and sentences we learned, Mr. Smith said. I went home and started writing. I wrote about my classes, my friends, and my new life in New York. It was hard but I enjoyed it. The next day, I read my story to the class. Yesterday, I went to school. I learned English. I talked to my friend Maria. We drank coffee. I was happy, I read. Good job, Jenny. Your English is improving, Mr. Smith said. I felt proud and happy. I knew I was on the right path. I kept studying hard and practicing every day. One evening, I decided to call Alex. I wanted to practice my English with him. Hi, Alex. How are you? I asked. Hi, Jenny. I am fine, thank you. How are you? Alex replied. I am good. I am learning English in New York, I said. That's great, Jenny. Keep up the good work. Alex said. I felt happy after talking to Alex. I knew I still had a long way to go, but I was getting better every day. I was excited about my journey and the new things I would learn. Every day in New York was a new adventure. I learned new words, made new friends, and discovered new places. I knew that learning English was not easy, but I was ready for the challenge.
I wanted to talk to Alex and many other people. I wanted to explore the world, and I knew that English was the key to my dreams. I was excited about the future. I knew that with hard work and determination, I could achieve my goals. My journey had just begun, and I was ready for every step of the way. This is the beginning of my story. A new beginning in New York, a city full of opportunities and new experiences. I was ready to learn, grow, and make my dreams come true. Part 2 First Friends in New York On Monday, I woke up early. I was excited to go to school. I got ready quickly and left my apartment. The weather was nice and sunny. I walked to school with a big smile on my face. When I arrived at school, Maria was waiting for me. Good morning, Jenny, Maria said cheerfully. Good morning, Maria. How are you today? I replied. I am good, thank you. Are you ready for class? Maria asked. Yes, I am ready. Let's go, I said. We walked to our classroom together. Mr. Smith was already there, setting up for the lesson. Good morning, class, Mr. Smith greeted us. Good morning, Mr. Smith, we all replied. Today, we will learn about asking and answering questions, Mr. Smith announced. Mr. Smith wrote some questions on the board. They were simple questions like, what is your name? And where are you from? Jenny, can you ask Maria a question? Mr. Smith asked. I thought for a moment. Maria, what is your favorite color? I asked. My favorite color is blue. What about you, Jenny? What is your favorite color? Maria replied. My favorite color is green. I answered. We practiced asking and answering questions with our classmates. It was fun and helpful. We learned how to have simple conversations. After class, Maria and I went to the school cafeteria. We wanted to have lunch and practice more English. What do you want to eat, Jenny? Maria asked. I want a sandwich and an apple. I replied. We got our food and sat at a table. While we ate, we talked about our families and our countries. Tell me about Canada, Jenny. What is it like? Maria asked. Canada is very big. It has a lot of nature like forests and lakes. In the winter, it is very cold and it snows a lot, I explained. That sounds beautiful. I want to visit Canada someday. Maria said. You should. It is a wonderful place, I said with a smile. After lunch, we went back to class. Mr. Smith had a surprise for us. Today, we will have a special activity. We will go to the park and practice English there, Mr. Smith announced. We all cheered. It sounded like fun. We walked to the park together. The park was big and green. There were many people walking, playing, and relaxing. Mr. Smith gave us a task. We had to find someone in the park and ask them three questions in English. Remember to be polite and smile, Mr. Smith said. Maria and I decided to work together. We looked around and saw a woman sitting on a bench, reading a book. Let's ask her, I said. We walked to the woman and smiled. Excuse me, can we ask you some questions? Maria asked politely. The woman looked up and smiled back. Of course. What would you like to ask? She said. What is your name? I asked. My name is Anna the woman replied. Nice to meet you, Anna. Where are you from? Maria asked. I am from New York. I live nearby. 
Anna said. What are you reading? I asked. I am reading a book about history. I love learning about the past, Anna replied. Thank you, Anna. Have a nice day, Maria and I said together. You're welcome. Have a nice day, too, Anna said with a smile. We felt proud of ourselves. We had talked to a stranger in English, and it went well. We walked back to Mr. Smith and told him about our conversation. Great job, Jenny and Maria. You did very well, Mr. Smith said. We spent the rest of the afternoon in the park. We practiced more English and had fun. I felt happy and confident. I knew I was getting better at English every day. In the evening, I went back to my apartment. I was tired but happy. I called my parents to tell them about my day. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Today was a great day. I made a new friend and practiced English in the park, I said. That's wonderful, Jenny. We are so proud of you, my mom said. Keep working hard, Jenny. You are doing great, my dad said. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I miss you. Good night. I said. The next day, we had a new student in our class. Her name was Yuki, and she was from Japan. She was very shy and quiet. Hi, Yuki. I am Jenny. Nice to meet you, I said. Hi, Jenny. Nice to meet you, too, Yuki replied softly. I wanted to help Yuki feel welcome. I remembered how nervous I was on my first day. I invited her to sit with me and Maria at lunch. Yuki, come sit with us. We can talk and practice English together, I said. Thank you, Jenny, Yuki said with a small smile. At lunch, we asked Yuki about Japan. She told us about her family, her favorite foods, and her hobbies. It was interesting to learn about her culture. What do you like to do in your free time, Yuki? Maria asked. I like to read books and watch movies, Yuki replied. What kind of books do you like? I asked. I like mystery books. They are very exciting, Yuki said. I like mystery books too. Maybe we can read a book together and talk about it, I suggested. That sounds fun. I would like that, Yuki said, smiling a little more. We continued to practice English together every day. We helped each other with homework and shared stories about our countries. Yuki became more comfortable and confident. It felt good to help her. One day... Mr. Smith gave us another homework assignment. Write a short dialogue. Practice with a partner and present it to the class, Mr. Smith said. Maria, Yuki, and I decided to work together. We wrote a dialogue about planning a trip to the zoo. We practiced many times until we felt ready. On the day of the presentation, we stood in front of the class. Hi, I am Maria. This is Jenny and Yuki. We will present our dialogue about going to the zoo, Maria said. We took turns speaking. I felt a little nervous, but it went well. Let's go to the zoo this weekend, Maria said. That sounds fun. What animals do you want to see? I asked. I want to see the lions and the elephants. Yuki replied, Me too. Let's meet at 10 a.m., I said. Okay, see you then, Maria said. The class clapped when we finished. Mr. Smith smiled and praised us. Good job, girls. Your dialogue was clear and interesting, Mr. Smith said. I felt proud of our work. We had practiced hard, and it showed. I knew I was getting better at English every day. 
The weeks passed quickly. I learned new words and phrases. I made more friends and had more adventures. I felt happy and excited about my journey. One day, Maria invited me to her apartment for dinner. She wanted to cook Brazilian food for us. Would you like to come to my place for dinner, Jenny? Maria asked. Yes, I would love to. Thank you, Maria, I replied. In the evening, I went to Maria's apartment. The smell of delicious food filled the air. Maria had cooked rice, beans, and chicken. It looked and smelled amazing. Welcome, Jenny. I hope you like Brazilian food, Maria said. I am sure I will. It smells so good, I said. We sat down to eat. The food was delicious. I thanked Maria for the wonderful meal. Thank you, Maria. This is so good, I said. I am glad you like it. It is my favorite food from home, Maria said. After dinner, we talked and laughed. We shared stories about our families and our dreams. It was a wonderful evening. As I walked back to my apartment, I thought about my time in New York. I felt grateful for my friends and my experiences. I knew that learning English was not just about studying. It was also about making friends and sharing stories. I was excited for the future. I knew that with hard work and the support of my friends, I could achieve my dreams. My journey was just beginning, and I was ready for every step of the way. Part 3. Exploring New York City Hi again. It's Jenny. I have been in New York for a month now. Let me tell you about my third week. It was full of exciting adventures. On Monday, after school, Maria had a great idea. Jenny, do you want to explore the city this weekend? Maria asked. Yes, I would love to. Where should we go? I replied. Let's go to Times Square. It's a famous place in New York, Maria suggested. That sounds fun. I can't wait, I said. All week, I looked forward to the weekend. On Saturday, Maria and I met early in the morning. We took the subway to Times Square. It was my first time on the subway. It was noisy and crowded, but I was excited. Here we are, Jenny. Welcome to Times Square, Maria said as we arrived. Times Square was amazing. There were bright lights and big screens everywhere. Many people were walking around, taking pictures, and shopping. It felt like a movie. Wow, Maria, this place is incredible, I exclaimed. I know! Let's take some pictures, Maria said. We took many pictures. We saw people dressed as famous characters, like Spider-Man and Mickey Mouse. We also saw street performers dancing and singing. Look, Jenny, there is a man making huge bubbles, Maria pointed out. We watched the man make bubbles. The bubbles were big and colorful. Many children were trying to catch them. It was so much fun to watch. Do you want to try? The man asked us. Yes, please, I said. He gave me the bubble wand. I dipped it in the soap and waved it in the air. A big bubble appeared and I laughed. Good job, Jenny, Maria cheered. After playing with the bubbles, we walked around some more. We saw many shops and restaurants. Are you hungry, Jenny? Maria asked. Yes, I am. Let's find a place to eat, I replied. We found a small pizza place. We ordered two slices of pizza and sat down to eat. New York pizza is the best, Maria said. It's delicious. I love it, 
I agreed. While we ate, we talked about our families and our dreams. It was nice to share stories with Maria. What do you want to do in the future, Jenny? Maria asked. I want to learn English well and travel the world. I also want to help people, I said. That's a wonderful dream. I want to travel too. Maybe we can travel together someday, Maria suggested. That would be amazing, I said with a smile. After lunch, we walked to Central Park. It was a big park with many trees, flowers, and lakes. It was beautiful and peaceful. Let's rent bikes and ride around the park, Maria suggested. Great idea. Let's do it, I agreed. We rented bikes and started to ride. The park was very big. We saw people walking, running, and having picnics. There were also many dogs playing. Look at those cute dogs, I pointed out. They are so adorable. I love dogs, Maria said. We stopped by a lake and sat down to rest. The view was amazing. The sun was shining and the water was sparkling. This place is so beautiful. I love it, I said. I'm glad you like it, Jenny. New York has many wonderful places, Maria said. We spent the whole day exploring the park. We visited the zoo, saw a castle, and even rode a boat on the lake. It was a perfect day. In the evening, we went back to my apartment. We were tired but very happy. Thank you for today, Maria. I had so much fun, I said. Me too, Jenny. Let's explore more places next time, Maria replied. The next day at school, I shared my experience with Yuki. Yuki, you should come with us next time. We had so much fun in Times Square and Central Park, I said. I would love to. It sounds amazing, Yuki said. After class, we all went to the library to study together. We had a test coming up, and we wanted to be ready. Let's help each other study, Maria suggested. Good idea. We can quiz each other, I said. We took turns asking questions and helping each other with difficult words. It was very helpful. Jenny, what is the past tense of go? Maria asked. It's went. I went to the park yesterday, I replied. Correct. Good job, Maria said. We studied hard for a few hours. We wanted to do well on the test. I felt grateful to have friends like Maria and Yuki. The day of the test arrived. I was a bit nervous, but also confident. I knew I had studied hard. Good luck, everyone, Mr. Smith said as he handed out the test papers. Thank you, Mr. Smith, we all replied. The test was challenging, but I did my best. I remembered all the things we had studied. When I finished, I felt relieved. How was it, Jenny? Maria asked after the test. It was hard, but I think I did okay, I said. I'm sure you did great, Yuki said with a smile. The next day, Mr. Smith gave us our test results. Jenny, you did very well. Keep up the good work, Mr. Smith said. Thank you, Mr. Smith, I replied happily. I was proud of my progress. I knew that learning English was not easy, but I was improving every day. To celebrate, Maria, Yuki, and I decided to go to a museum. We chose the Museum of Natural History. It was a big museum with many interesting exhibits. Look at the dinosaur skeletons. They are huge, 
Maria said excitedly. Wow, they are amazing, I said. We walked through the different exhibits, learning about animals, plants, and the history of the Earth. It was very educational and fun. Do you like museums, Yuki? I asked. Yes, I love them. I learned so much from them, Yuki replied. After the museum, we went to a nearby cafe to have some tea and talk. What was your favorite part of the museum? Maria asked. I loved the dinosaur exhibit. It was fascinating, I said. Me too. I also liked the space exhibit. The planets and stars were so beautiful, Yuki said. We talked and laughed for hours. It was a wonderful way to end the day. As I walked back to my apartment, I thought about my time in New York. I felt happy and grateful for all the experiences and friendships I had made. I knew that learning English was more than just studying. It was about living, exploring, and connecting with people. I was excited for the future and all the new adventures that awaited me. My journey was just beginning and I was ready for every step of the way. Part 4. Finding Confidence in New York Hi, it's Jenny again. I'm excited to share my fourth week in New York with you. This week was special because I learned to believe in myself and found more confidence. On Monday, I woke up feeling a bit nervous. We had a big project to present in class. Mr. Smith had asked us to make a presentation about our favorite place in New York. Maria, Yuki, and I worked hard on it. Good morning, Jenny. Maria greeted me with a smile as we met outside the school. Good morning, Maria. Are you ready for our presentation? I asked. Yes, I am ready. How about you? Maria replied. I'm a bit nervous, but I think we'll do well, I said. We walked to our classroom and saw Yuki waiting for us. Hi, Yuki. Are you excited about our presentation? I asked. Yes, but I'm a little scared too, Yuki said softly. Don't worry, Yuki. We will do great, Maria said encouragingly. Mr. Smith started the class and called us to present first. Jenny, Maria, and Yuki, please come to the front, Mr. Smith said. We walked to the front of the class and took a deep breath. I started the presentation. Hello, everyone. Today we will talk about our favorite place in New York, Central Park, I began. Maria showed the pictures we had taken at the park, and Yuki explained why we loved it. Central Park is big and beautiful. We like to ride bikes, see the animals, and relax by the lake, Yuki said. Maria added, It's a peaceful place in the middle of the busy city. We can enjoy nature and have fun. I finished the presentation by saying, we hope you visit Central Park and enjoy it as much as we do. The class clapped, and Mr. Smith smiled. Great job, girls. Your presentation was clear and interesting, Mr. Smith said. We felt proud and relieved. We had done well, and our hard work paid off. After school, Maria had another idea. Jenny, Yuki, Let's celebrate our successful presentation. Do you want to try some American food? Maria asked. Yes, that sounds fun, I replied. I would like that too, Yuki said with a shy smile. We decided to go to a diner nearby. It was a classic American diner with red booths and a jukebox playing music. Welcome! Please have a seat, the waitress greeted us. We sat down and looked at the menu. 
There were many delicious options. What do you want to eat, Jenny? Maria asked. I think I'll have a cheeseburger and fries, I said. I'll have the same, Maria said. I want to try a milkshake, Yuki said. We ordered our food and waited. When the food arrived, it looked amazing. This looks so good, I exclaimed. We started eating and talked about our day. Jenny, you did great in the presentation. You spoke clearly and confidently, Maria said. Thank you, Maria. You and Yuki did great, too. I'm glad we worked together, I replied. Yuki nodded and said, I'm happy we are friends. After eating, we walked around the neighborhood. We saw many interesting shops and people. New York is so diverse. There are people from all over the world, Maria said. Yes, it's amazing. I love learning about different cultures, I said. As we walked, we came across a small bookstore. The sign outside said, Book reading tonight. Let's go in and see what it's about, Maria suggested. We walked into the bookstore. It was cozy and filled with books. There were people sitting and listening to a woman reading from a book. Welcome. Please join us, the woman said. We found seats and listened. The woman was reading a beautiful story. Her voice was calm and expressive. After the reading, the woman introduced herself. Hello, my name is Emma. I'm the author of the book I just read. Thank you for listening, Emma said. We clapped, and Maria raised her hand to ask a question. Emma, how did you become a writer? Maria asked. Emma smiled and replied, I always loved writing stories. I wrote every day and shared my stories with friends and family. One day, I decided to publish my book. It was hard work, but it was worth it. That's inspiring. Thank you for sharing, Maria said. We stayed a bit longer, looking at books and talking to Emma. She was very kind and gave us advice on improving our English. Reading books and writing every day can help you a lot. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Keep practicing, Emma said. Thank you, Emma. We will try our best, I said. We left the bookstore feeling inspired and motivated. I realized that learning English was not just about speaking. It was also about listening, reading, and writing. The next day at school, Mr. Smith gave us a new assignment. Write a short story about your favorite memory in New York so far, Mr. Smith said. I thought about all the fun things I had done. I decided to write about our day at Central Park. After class, we went to the library to work on our stories. What are you writing about, Maria? I asked. I'm writing about our visit to Times Square. It was so exciting, Maria replied. What about you, Yuki? I asked. I'm writing about the museum. I learned so much, Yuki said. We helped each other with our stories, correcting mistakes and giving ideas. It was fun to share our memories. When we finished, we read our stories to each other. Your story is great, Jenny. It makes me feel like I'm in Central Park again, Maria said. Thank you, Maria. Your story about Times Square is very exciting, I said. Yuki's story was wonderful, too. She wrote about all the things she learned at the museum and how it made her feel. The next day, we handed in our stories to Mr. Smith. Thank you, everyone, 
I'm looking forward to reading your stories, Mr. Smith said. In the afternoon, we had a special event at school. It was a talent show, and everyone was invited to participate. Do you want to join the talent show, Jenny? Maria asked. I'm not sure. I don't know what talent to show, I said. You are good at telling stories. Why don't you share your story about Central Park? Maria suggested. That's a good idea. I can try, I said, feeling a bit nervous. Yuki decided to join, too. She wanted to sing a song in English. We practiced together after school. Let's practice in the park. It will be nice, Maria suggested. We went to Central Park and found a quiet spot to practice. I read my story out loud and Yuki sang her song. Maria gave us feedback and helped us improve. You both are doing great. Keep practicing and you'll be amazing, Maria said. The day of the talent show arrived. The auditorium was full of students and teachers. I felt nervous but also excited. First, Yuki went on stage to sing. She sang beautifully, and everyone clapped loudly. Great job, Yuki, I said as she returned to her seat. Thank you, Jenny. Good luck with your story, Yuki said with a smile. It was my turn. I walked to the stage and took a deep breath. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenny, and I want to share a story about my favorite place in New York, Central Park. I began. I told my story with confidence, remembering all the wonderful memories we made. When I finished, everyone clapped, and I felt proud. Thank you, Jenny. That was a wonderful story, Mr. Smith said. After the talent show, many students came to talk to us. Your story was great, Jenny. I loved it one student said. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it, I replied. We celebrated with ice cream and talked about our performances. I felt happy and grateful for my friends and experiences. As I walked home, I thought about how much I had grown since coming to New York. I felt more confident and excited about the future. Part 5. Making New Friends Hi, it's Jenny again. I've been in New York for over a month now. This week, something wonderful happened. I made new friends and had some exciting adventures. On Monday after school, I was sitting in the library with Maria and Yuki. We were studying for our English test. Do you think we will do well on the test? I asked. Yes, we have studied a lot. We just need to stay calm and do our best, Maria said. I agree. We have worked hard, Yuki added. While we were studying, a girl from our class came over. Her name was Sarah. She had long brown hair and a friendly smile. Hi, can I sit with you? Sarah asked. Of course, join us. Maria replied. Sarah sat down and took out her books. I've seen you in class. You are all very good at English, Sarah said. Thank you, Sarah. We try our best, I replied. Do you need help with anything? Yuki asked. Yes, I'm having trouble with some grammar. Can you help me? Sarah asked. Sure. We can help, I said. We spent the next hour helping Sarah with her grammar. She was very grateful and happy. Thank you so much. You are all very kind, Sarah said. You're welcome. We are happy to help, Maria replied. After studying, Sarah invited us to her house for dinner on Friday. Would you like to come to my house for dinner? My family would love to meet you, Sarah said. 
Yes, we would love to. Thank you for inviting us, I said. Friday came quickly. We were excited to visit Sarah's house. After school, we went to her home. It was a cozy apartment in a nice neighborhood. Welcome. Come in, please, Sarah's mother greeted us. Thank you for having us, Maria said. We took off our shoes and entered the living room. It was warm and inviting. Please make yourselves comfortable, Sarah's mother said. We sat down, and Sarah's little brother came running in. Hi, my name is Tom, he said with a big smile. Hi, Tom. Nice to meet you, I said. Sarah's father joined us, and we all talked for a while. They were a very friendly family. Dinner is ready, Sarah's mother announced. We went to the dining table. The food looked delicious. There was chicken, vegetables, rice, and bread. Wow, this looks amazing, Yuki said. Thank you. I hope you like it, Sarah's mother said. We started eating, and the food was very tasty. This is so good. Thank you for cooking, I said. You're welcome, Jenny. I'm glad you like it, Sarah's mother replied. After dinner, we went back to the living room. Sarah had an idea. Do you want to play a game? Sarah asked. Yes, that sounds fun, Maria said. Sarah brought out a board game called Scrabble. It's a game where you make words with letters. Do you know how to play? Sarah asked. I've never played before. Can you teach us? I asked. Sure, it's easy and fun, Sarah said. Sarah explained the rules and we started playing. It was a great way to practice English. Look, I made the word cat. Tom said proudly. Good job, Tom. Now it's my turn, I said. We played for a few hours, laughing and learning new words. It was a wonderful evening. Thank you for inviting us, Sarah. We had a great time, Maria said. Thank you for coming. Let's do this again soon, Sarah replied. We said goodbye and went home feeling happy to have made a new friend. The next day at school, Sarah joined us for lunch. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I asked. I'm good. Thank you for helping me with English. I feel more confident now, Sarah said. We are happy to help. You're doing great, Yuki said. We talked about our weekend plans. Maria had an idea. Let's go to the beach on Saturday. It will be fun, Maria suggested. Yes, I love the beach. Let's go, I said. I've never been to the beach here. I'm excited, Yuki said. I would love to join you, Sarah said. Saturday came and we met at the subway station to go to the beach. It was a sunny day, perfect for the beach. Do you have everything? Sunscreen, towels, and snacks? Maria asked. Yes, we are ready, I replied. We took the subway to Coney Island, a famous beach in New York. When we arrived, the beach was beautiful. The sand was soft, and the water was blue. Wow, this is amazing, Sarah said. I'm so happy to be here, Yuki said. We found a spot to sit and put down our towels. We put on sunscreen and went to play in the water. The water is so refreshing, I said. We swam and played in the waves. We also built sandcastles and collected seashells. Look at this big shell I found, Tom said, showing us his shell. That's a great shell, Tom, I said. We had a picnic lunch with sandwiches, fruit, and cookies. 
It was delicious. This is the best day ever, Yuki said. I agree. We should come here more often, Sarah said. In the afternoon, we went on some rides at the amusement park near the beach. There were roller coasters, a Ferris wheel, and many fun games. Let's ride the Ferris wheel. We can see the whole beach from the top, Maria suggested. We all agreed and got on the Ferris wheel. The view from the top was amazing. Look, we can see the whole city from here, I said. This is so cool, Tom said excitedly. After the rides, we bought ice cream and sat on the beach to watch the sunset. The sky turned beautiful colors of orange, pink, and purple. This is the perfect end to a perfect day, Maria said. I'm so happy we are friends. Thank you for today, I said. We hugged and promised to have more adventures together. I felt very lucky to have such wonderful friends. As we walked back to the subway station, we talked about our next adventure. Part 6. Learning English Every Day Hi, it's Jenny. I'm excited to share my journey of learning English with you. This week was all about finding new ways to improve my language skills and discovering techniques that really help. On Monday, after school, Maria, Yuki, and I went to the bookstore near our school. Let's find some English books to read. It will help us practice, Maria suggested. Yes, that's a great idea. I want to read more in English, I said. We looked around the bookstore and found a section with English books for beginners. Look at these books. They have pictures and easy words, Yuki said. Yes, these are perfect for us, Maria agreed. We each chose a book that interested us. I picked a story about a girl who travels around the world. This book looks fun. I can't wait to read it, I said. We bought our books and went to a cafe to read. Reading in English was challenging, but it was also enjoyable. Do you understand everything, Jenny? Maria asked. Not everything, but I'm trying to guess the meanings from the pictures, I replied. That's a good strategy. Keep trying, and you will improve, Yuki encouraged. After reading for an hour, we talked about the story and helped each other with difficult words. Do you know what adventure means? Maria asked. Yes, it means a journey or exciting experience, I answered. Great job, Jenny. You're learning fast, Maria said. Reading books in English was a fun way to practice. It helped me learn new words and improve my reading skills. On Tuesday, we had a special guest speaker at school. Her name was Emily, and she was from England. Hello, everyone. My name is Emily. I'm here to talk to you about British culture and language, Emily said. Emily showed us pictures of famous landmarks in England, like Big Ben and Buckingham Palace. England looks beautiful. I want to visit one day, Yuki said. Emily taught us some common English phrases and expressions used in England. Can you say cheers when you want to thank someone? Emily asked. Cheers, we all said together. Emily also taught us about British food, like fish and chips. Do you eat fish and chips in England? Tom asked. Yes, it's a popular dish. Would you like to try it? Emily replied. After the presentation, Emily gave us worksheets to practice what we learned. It was interesting to learn about different cultures and languages. Thank you, Emily. I learned a lot today, Maria said.
You're welcome. Keep practicing and you will become fluent in English, Emily said with a smile. Emily's visit inspired us to learn more about different English-speaking countries and cultures. On Wednesday, Mr. Smith gave us a new assignment, to write a journal in English every day. Writing a journal will help you practice your English writing skills. You can write about your day, thoughts, and feelings, Mr. Smith explained. That's a great idea. I want to improve my writing, Yuki said. We started writing our journals that evening. I wrote about my day at school, the new words I learned, and my plans for the weekend. Writing in English is harder than speaking, but I think it's good practice, I said. I agree. It's helping me organize my thoughts in English, Maria said. We kept writing our journals every day. It became easier, and we noticed improvements in our writing skills. On Thursday, Maria introduced us to an English learning app on her phone. This app has exercises and games to practice grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation, Maria explained. That sounds fun. Can I try it? Yuki asked. Sure. Here, let me show you, Maria said, handing her phone to Yuki. Yuki tried some vocabulary games and pronunciation exercises on the app. This game is challenging, but I like it, Yuki said. We all tried different exercises on the app. It was a fun way to learn and compete with each other. Look, I got a high score in the pronunciation game, Tom said proudly. That's great, Tom. Keep practicing, I encouraged him. Using the app helped us review what we learned in class and improve our English skills in a playful way. On Friday, we had a class project to work on together. Mr. Smith divided us into groups and gave us a topic to research and present. Work together and practice speaking in English. Use your notes to help you, Mr. Smith said. Maria, Yuki, Sarah, and I were in the same group. Our topic was famous landmarks in New York City. Let's research about the Statue of Liberty. It's a famous landmark here, Sarah suggested. Yes, and we can talk about its history and significance, Maria added. We went to the library after school and found books and articles about the Statue of Liberty. We took notes and made a plan for our presentation. Who wants to start the presentation? Yuki asked. I can start. I'll talk about why the Statue of Liberty is important, Sarah volunteered. I'll talk about its history and how it was built, Maria said. I'll talk about the visitors and what they can do there, I added. We practiced our presentation and helped each other with pronunciation and grammar. Your pronunciation is good, Jenny. Keep practicing the T sound, Maria advised. I will. Thank you for helping me, I replied. On Saturday, we met at Maria's house to finish our project. We put together our notes and created a slideshow for our presentation. Do you think we are ready? Yuki asked nervously. Yes. We have prepared well. Let's practice once more, Sarah suggested. We practiced our presentation several times until we felt confident. Good luck, everyone. You will do great, Maria said. At school on Monday, it was our turn to present. We stood in front of the class and started our presentation about the Statue of Liberty. Hello, everyone. Today, we will talk about the Statue of Liberty, a symbol of freedom and friendship, Sarah began. Maria and I followed, 
talking about its history, design, and the experience of visiting it. Thank you for listening. We hope you visit the Statue of Liberty and learn more about its significance, I concluded. Part 7. Facing Setbacks I'm Jenny, and I want to share with you some of the ups and downs I've faced on my journey to learn English. It hasn't always been easy, but every challenge has taught me something valuable. Learning a new language is like exploring uncharted territory. There are moments of excitement and discovery, but also times when you stumble and feel lost. One of those stumbling moments happened to me at a coffee shop not long ago. I remember standing in line, trying to muster the courage to order a complicated coffee drink. I had practiced the words in my head, grande, venti, non-fat, decaf, but when it was my turn to speak, the words seemed to jumble up in my mouth. Can I have a, um, grande? No, venti, non-fat, decaf, um, latte? I stuttered nervously. The barista looked puzzled, and I could feel the impatience of the people behind me in line. My cheeks turned warm with embarrassment, and I decided to leave the shop without my coffee. I couldn't believe I'd messed up such a simple order. Walking back to school, I felt frustrated and disappointed in myself. Learning a new language had its highs and lows, and that day definitely felt like a low point. When I shared my experience with Maria later that day, she was quick to reassure me. Jenny, don't be so hard on yourself. We all make mistakes. It's part of the learning process, Maria said kindly. I nodded, trying to take her words to heart. Learning English had been a roller coaster ride, filled with moments of triumph and moments like this one, where I felt like I had taken a step back. Another challenge I faced was with English grammar. Some rules seemed straightforward, while others left me scratching my head in confusion. Why is English grammar so complicated? I sighed one day in class. It gets easier with practice, Jenny. Keep at it. Mr. Smith, our English teacher, reassured me. And keep at it I did. I spent extra time doing grammar exercises, asking questions in class, and practicing with Maria and Yuki. Slowly but surely, I started to grasp the rules better. It was a gradual process of learning and making mistakes, but each mistake brought me closer to understanding. Speaking of mistakes, there were times when my spoken English didn't quite match what I had in mind. One evening, I decided to call my friend Alex to practice speaking English. As I dialed his number, my heart raced with nervousness. Hello, Jenny. How are you? Alex greeted me warmly. Hi, Alex. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I replied, trying to sound confident. We chatted for a while, but I stumbled over my words and made a few mistakes. After we hung up, I couldn't help but feel disappointed in myself. I thought my English was better than this, I thought sadly. I confided in Mr. Smith about my feelings during our next class. Jenny, you've made incredible progress. Don't be too hard on yourself. Speaking a new language takes time and practice. Keep going, Mr. Smith encouraged me with a gentle smile. His words were a comfort to me. I realized that setbacks were a natural part of the learning process. It wasn't about avoiding mistakes, but learning from them and pushing forward. One of the most helpful experiences I had was during a pronunciation workshop in class. 
a guest speaker, came to teach us tips and techniques to improve our pronunciation. Repeat after me. She sells seashells by the seashore, the speaker instructed. I focused intently on each sound, trying to mimic the speaker's pronunciation. With practice and perseverance, I felt my pronunciation improving over time. I continued practicing at home and with my friends, feeling more confident with each attempt. Learning to handle misunderstandings was another important lesson for me. One day, I misinterpreted a friend's invitation and ended up going to the wrong place. Oh no, I thought we were meeting at the park, I exclaimed when I realized my mistake. It's okay, Jenny. Misunderstandings happen. Let's meet up now. My friend replied with understanding. I learned to laugh at myself and take these moments in stride. Each misunderstanding became a humorous anecdote and a reminder to clarify things when in doubt. Through all these challenges and setbacks, I grew stronger and more determined. I understood that learning a language wasn't just about memorizing words and grammar rules. It was about embracing the journey, with all its twists and turns. I made a promise to myself to keep pushing forward, even on days when progress seemed slow or setbacks felt discouraging. Every step, no matter how small, was a step closer to my goal of speaking fluent English. Looking back, I'm grateful for these challenges because they taught me resilience and perseverance. They showed me that setbacks were not obstacles, but opportunities for growth and improvement. So, if you're on a similar journey of learning a new language, remember that it's okay to stumble along the way. Embrace the ups and downs, celebrate your successes, and learn from your mistakes. Keep going, and you'll be amazed at how far you can go. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope it inspires you to keep pursuing your language learning goals, no matter what challenges you face along the way. Part 8. Connecting with my love. As my English skills improved, I couldn't stop thinking about Alex. He was always on my mind, and I dreamed of being able to talk to him fluently. So one day, I decided to reach out. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? I've been learning a lot here in New York. I messaged him nervously. Hi, Jenny. I'm good. It's great to hear from you. I'm proud of you for learning English, Alex replied almost instantly. That simple response made my day. We started chatting regularly after that. Each conversation was like a step forward in my journey. I felt more comfortable speaking English with Alex, and he was so encouraging. We talked about everything. My experiences in New York, his studies at Harvard, even our favorite foods. It felt amazing to connect with him on a deeper level, using the language I had been working so hard to learn. Tell me about your studies, Alex. What's your favorite subject? I asked one day, genuinely curious about his life. I'm studying computer science. I love coding and creating new projects. What about you, Jenny? What do you enjoy the most about New York? Alex replied, his words sparking a sense of excitement in me. Sharing these moments with Alex made me realize how far I had come. His support meant the world to me, and it motivated me to keep pushing myself. Then, one day, something incredible happened. Alex surprised me with a video call. Hi, Jenny. Do you have time for a video chat? Alex asked, his smile lighting up the screen. 
Yes, of course. I'd love that, I replied, my heart racing with excitement. During that call, we laughed, talked, and joked around like old friends. I was nervous at first, worried about making mistakes, but Alex's reassurance melted away my fears. Your English has improved so much, Jenny. I'm really impressed, Alex said sincerely, his words filling me with pride. Thank you, Alex. I've been working hard. It means a lot to hear that from you, I replied, unable to hide my smile. We continued to stay in touch, and I found myself practicing English every day with renewed dedication. I imagined the day I could talk to Alex without any hesitation or struggle. Then, one evening, Alex called me with news that made my heart skip a beat. Jenny, I have a break coming up. I'm planning to visit New York. Would you like to meet? Alex asked, his voice filled with excitement. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. It felt like a dream come true. Yes, I'd love to meet you, Alex. That sounds wonderful, I replied, trying to contain my excitement. We made plans to meet at a cafe in New York. The anticipation built up inside me as the day approached. I wanted everything to be perfect, to impress Alex with my English skills and show him how much I had grown. Finally, the day arrived. I dressed in my favorite outfit, checked my reflection in the mirror a dozen times, and headed to the cafe where we agreed to meet. And there he was, standing outside with a smile that could light up the entire city. Hi, Alex. It's so good to see you, I greeted him warmly, feeling a rush of emotions. Hi, Jenny. You look great. It's wonderful to see you, too. Alex replied, his eyes twinkling with happiness. We spent the day exploring New York together, visiting museums, walking through Central Park, and chatting about everything and nothing. I felt comfortable and at ease, as if we had known each other for years. As we sat down for a coffee break, Alex looked at me with genuine admiration in his eyes. Jenny, I'm really impressed by your dedication. You've come a long way, Alex said sincerely. Thank you, Alex. Your support means a lot to me. I wanted to learn English to communicate better with you, I replied, feeling a warmth spread through my heart. Alex smiled warmly and gently took my hand. You've done an amazing job, Jenny. I'm proud of you, he said softly, his words sending a wave of joy through me. In that moment, I realized how far I had come on my journey. Learning English wasn't just about mastering a language. It was about connecting with people, expressing myself, and building relationships. We continued to stay in touch after Alex returned to Harvard. Our bond grew stronger with each conversation, each shared moment. I felt grateful for my journey and the progress I had made. Learning English had opened so many doors for me, including the door to Alex's heart. As I reflect on those days now, I'm filled with gratitude for the challenges I faced and the lessons I learned. They made me stronger, more resilient, and more determined than ever to keep pushing forward. So, if you're on your own language learning journey, remember this. Embrace every opportunity to practice, celebrate every small victory, and never be afraid to reach out and connect. You never know where your journey might lead you. Thank you for listening to my story. 
I hope it inspires you to chase your dreams and never give up, no matter how daunting the path may seem. Part 9. A New Chapter Begins Hi, it's Jenny. I want to share the final part of my journey with you. It's been a roller coaster of emotions, love, and learning. Let's dive into how it all came together. After my wonderful day with Alex in New York, we continued to stay in touch. Our bond grew stronger, and I felt more motivated than ever to improve my English. I wanted to be able to express my feelings clearly and share everything with Alex. One evening, I received a message from Alex that made my heart skip a beat. Jenny, I have some big news. Can we talk tonight? Alex wrote. My mind raced with possibilities. What could it be? I couldn't wait to find out. Of course, Alex. I'm free tonight. Call me anytime, I replied eagerly. When Alex called, I could hear the excitement in his voice. Jenny, I've been accepted for an internship in New York. I'll be moving there next month, he announced. I was overjoyed. This was the best news I could have hoped for. That's amazing, Alex. I'm so happy for you. We'll get to see each other more often, I exclaimed. Yes, and I can't wait to spend more time with you. You've been such an inspiration to me, Jenny. Your dedication to learning English is incredible, Alex said warmly. Hearing those words from Alex filled me with a deep sense of accomplishment. My hard work was paying off, and it felt wonderful to have his support. As the days passed, I continued to practice English diligently. I joined more conversation clubs, watched English movies, and read books. I even started helping other students who were also learning English. One day, Maria and I were sitting in a cafe talking about our progress. Jenny, I'm so proud of you. Your English has improved so much, and you're helping others too, Maria said with a smile. Thank you, Maria. It's been a challenging journey, but it's all worth it. I feel more confident every day, I replied, feeling grateful for my friend's support. As the date of Alex's move approached, we made plans to explore the city together. We talked about visiting museums, trying new restaurants, and going to concerts. I'm looking forward to all the adventures we'll have, Jenny. Alex said during one of our calls. Me too, Alex. It's going to be amazing, I replied, my heart brimming with happiness. Finally, the day arrived. Alex moved to New York and we met up at our favorite cafe. Hi, Alex. Welcome to New York, I greeted him with a big smile. Hi, Jenny. It's great to be here. I've missed you, Alex replied, pulling me into a warm hug. We spent the day exploring the city, laughing, and enjoying each other's company. It felt like a dream come true. Jenny, you've worked so hard and come so far. I admire your dedication and your passion, Alex said as we walked through Central Park. Thank you, Alex. Your support has meant so much to me. I couldn't have done it without you, I replied, feeling a deep connection with him. As we sat down on a bench, Alex looked into my eyes and took my hand. Jenny, I have something to tell you. I've fallen in love with you. Your strength, your determination, and your kindness have captured my heart. Alex confessed, his voice full of emotion. Tears of joy filled my eyes as I realized how much Alex meant to me. Alex, I love you too. 
You've been my inspiration and my motivation. I'm so grateful to have you in my life, I replied, my heart overflowing with happiness. In that moment, I knew that all the challenges I faced were worth it. Learning English had not only helped me communicate better, but it also brought me closer to the person I loved. As Alex and I started this new chapter together, I felt a sense of fulfillment and joy. My journey to learn English had transformed my life in ways I never imagined. For all the English learners out there, remember this. Never give up on your dreams. The journey may be tough, but with dedication, hard work, and support, you can achieve anything. Embrace every challenge, celebrate every victory, and keep pushing forward. Thank you for following my story. I hope it inspires you to keep learning, keep growing, and always believe in yourself.